right, welcome to another episode of Inspired Content, where we're looking at another two short stories out of the world's best science fiction of 1969. And the two stories we're looking at this time are Star Song and Fear Hound. And I'm going to say right now, I was almost kind of angry at Star Song. This is just Orpheus. The story, the legend of Orpheus, told with reclothing it as a science fiction. I just, I was just disgusted that, I mean, this is not a story. This is not an original story. This is just a, re it's a remake. And so, I gave it a 3.1 out of a 5.3. That's all I can do you. I mean, for crying out loud, one of the gatekeepers on this hell world that they went to was a three-brained gatekeeper. Ooh, can you say Cerebrus? <clears throat> it really made me angry. Um, it's just so unoriginal, so unuseful. It's not... It gives no new material, it's just a redressing. But Fearhound, I gave an 8.3 out of an 8.5. I really did enjoy this story, not only for the ideas it can give you to play with, um, but it's really good world building. In a short story format, they built a world where I feel like there's enough stories going on that we could we could get a TV series. We could get a whole series of novels or TV programs out of this setting. This world, some of the characters. It's, it's one of the best examples of how to do a world building in a short space of time. I really did enjoy it. So 8.3 out of an 8.5. Alright, that being said, ideas they inspired. Human brains grown from samples with no awareness eventually grow their own consciousness. So we're used to thinking of them as raw materials to carve off pieces of as like um, organ replacement for missing pieces of somebody's brain that their own brain will grow into and it'll become functional pieces of brain. But as a whole, by the, when they start out with they have no no capability to do anything on their own. They're not aware, they're not thinking entities, they're just tissue samples that you can use. But, somehow, one of them has been sitting long enough that it starts to entertain its own thoughts and then become self-aware. What does that do for the industry that's been using them like this? And what does that mean for the brain itself? The aliens graft more and more human brain into their own intelligence and then graft the brains into captive humans to return to human space as spies. Capturing the remains of humans from battle sites and conflicts and tinkering with the organs, keeping them alive and uh, testing new ways to kill them, but they eventually manage to assemble entire reproductive organs from the remains and manage to breed a new human being. And so it's the first time they've had access to an entire human being that wasn't an enemy combatant who would fight tooth and nail and obliterate themselves in order to fight that battle. And so you have this child that you can then raise a human amongst these aliens and see how you can twist it to your own ways and maybe set it up to be a dangerous entity you send back into humanity looking like a human by finding out things about the humans that you didn't know before. Alright, and so the next three are for Fearhound. In this story, one of the characters is a detector who can detect the psychic uh, messages of others. But I got to thinking, like, 
what if this character really isn't themselves? What if they just think they're out there themselves doing this? And, in fact, it's the consciousness of this uh, detector in the body of a street kid. But the, the detector, it is in a vegetative state in a hospital. And so it's this vegetative human being who momentarily possesses other people and is a sidekick for the, the main character who uses his help often and hires him as a consultant. Uh, in this case, they're tracking down the, the voice of somebody who's in desperate need of help, but in my mind, I got to wondering, like, is the calling out voice that they hear in, the, in his mind, in fact, that of the unborn child, because it's been suggested that uh, people who are not pregnant imagine themselves to be pregnant because that mind is broadcasting so much that many people think that they're pregnant. I got to wondering if maybe it's the unborn child that is sending out the message as the mother lays unconscious and dying from a head injury or something somewhere. The main character's mind is so absolutely scrambled either by this instance or other instances that they don't even know who they are for sure. Their mind is a jumble of things that happen to them and never happen to them, and they don't know which one they are. And so they're wandering through life, hoping to maybe uncover some aspect of that, or gain enough control over their abilities to be able to parse out which is them and which is added to them. Alright, so those are the ideas and inspirations I got from this batch. And that meets the end of all the stories out of the two books we started with, and everything out of this one as well. So we're all done there. Next, theoretically, I will probably be uploading about ten uh, taste test videos, uh, where I try uh, new flavors of chips or cookies or candy, and give my thoughts and inspirations from those as well. For new recipes and ideas. Um, I got about 10 of those and they're a backlog from previous to now so things will look a little bit different. But after that I will be trying to do some product and services videos to finish up November and then I should try to get back into the regular content but there's a bigger project come a couple big projects coming along the way that may disrupt that pattern. So stay tuned for uh, new messages on what that's going to be like. So thanks for joining me for this one, and I will see you later. Take care of yourselves.